Hi everyone, and welcome to another video of the SAFI webinar series. In this video, we are going to have an overview of surface loads. To add a load on a surface load, we first need to select the surface load. Then we use the command surface loads in this list on the addition toolbar. We can apply a concentrated load, pressure load, thermal load, and a wind load. To apply a concentrated load, first we need to select a basic load, for example, a dead basic load. Then we specify the intensity of the force, for example, minus 10 kilonewtons. After that, we specify the position of the load according to the internal axes of the surface. To display the internal axes of the surface, we can use the command edit surface or the key U to display the internal axes of the surface. So, the origin of the internal axes is this joint. The x axis is in this direction and the y axis is in this direction. If you want to apply a load at a position of 2 meters in the x direction and 5 meters in the y direction, we can fill these two fields and click Add. If we don't see the load, we can click on this button, Show, and we can see the load that we applied graphically on the surface load. It is possible to edit the concentrated loads in a numerical table by clicking on this button. Next we have pressure loads. To add a pressure load on a surface, we need to select a basic load and then we select the distribution of the load. We have a constant pressure, we have a variable in plane, we have a variable partial of plane, we have a variable out of plane, we have two zone linear, we have two zone steps, we have three zone linear, and finally, we also have three zone steps. These are the different types of distribution of pressure. For this example, we are going to select a constant distribution. In this case, we just need to specify the pressure applied on the surface load. For example, minus two kilonewtons on the global y axis. If we want to offset this pressure, we can specify an offset from the edge of the surface. For example, we can specify the variable x1 from the first edge, let's say 1 meter, from the third edge, x2, will be another 1 meter, and for y, we will apply an offset of 2 meters and the same thing for the opposite side. We then click Add. Now we can see graphically the surface loads that we defined here. So we have a pressure of minus two kilonewtons and we applied an offset from the sides of the surface. It is possible to edit the pressure loads on surfaces by clicking on this button. We can see all the pressure surface loads applied to the surfaces in this model. We can add new loads, edit the existing loads and delete loads on surfaces. Next, we have a thermal load. The only type of thermal load that we can apply is a temperature gradient delta T membrane. So, we can't apply a delta T bending. We simply specify the temperature gradients and we click add. Then we can see graphically the thermal load. We can also edit the thermal load on surfaces in a numerical table by clicking on this button. The last type of surface load is a wind load. To add a wind surface load, we need to specify a wind profile. We click on this button. In this dialog box, we need to specify the parameter of the wind load, including the incidence angle and the section dimensions. If we consider ice, we can specify the thickness here. We can also specify the y coordinates of the ground. For example, below this coordinate, there will be no wind load. We can specify the distribution method, so we have a uniform pressure. In this case, we simply specify the pressure, for example, 2 kilonewtons per square meter. We can also use the option user defined. The user defined option allows the user to specify pressure at different elevations. I'm going to create a custom profile here. At an elevation of 3 meters, I will have a pressure of 1 kilonewton. At an elevation of 6 meters, I will put 1.5 and I will put 0.5 at an elevation of 0. I will save this user defined profile under the name custom. Now, after defining the user defined distribution, we can assign it to the wind profile. After defining the wind profile, we can assign it to the surface load. 
We can specify the calculation approach. We have three calculation approaches in the program. We have projected area, where we project the area of the section in the direction of the wind. We have the projected pressure, where we project the pressure of the wind on the section. And finally, we have the velocity component, where we project the velocity instead of the pressure. We can specify the first coefficient directly from this parameter and the shielding factor from here. Let's create a surface on this wall, and we will apply a wind load on the surface. I select the surface, and then I click Add. We click Show, and we can graphically see the wind profile pressures. It is also possible to use distribution methods defined by the codes. For example, NVCC 2015. In this case, the user can specify a reference wind pressure. I can click on this button to retrieve the regional data information. Next we can specify the terrain parameters and the gust factor and the reference elevation and the software will automatically calculate the pressure of the wind depending on the elevation of the surface. It is possible to display the wind load on surfaces in a numerical table. If we click on this button, we can see the wind load parameters, including the force applied on the surface and the projected area. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and catch you in another one of our webinar series videos.